Welcome back to the Cordless Vacuum Guide and shifting from cordless stick vacuums, we'll look in depth at the Roborack Robot Vacuum product line, a bird's eye view of their product offerings from 2022 and beyond. I already did a video before, but with the latest product releases, namely the Q series and the new S7 Max V series, it's a perfect time to update you guys about what's new with Roborock. The robot vacuum line to be specific, plus a brief history lesson. Their first product wasn't called a Roborock. It was called the Xiaomi Robot Vacuum, when Roborock was still under their wing. With that released, Roborock introduced several new innovations. The most notable is the Live Map, which none of the major brands I know utilized. The two leading brands that dominated the industry during that period, Needle and iRobot didn't have this feature. The Xiaomi Robot Vacuum was one of the early utilizers of the smartphone app to control the robot vacuum. It's also one of the first to utilize a three-pass run, something I haven't seen, at least with the robot vacuums I've tested. As we go along this video, I'll share the other innovations Roborock has introduced. Currently, the Roborock lineup consists of six model segments, the E-Series, S-Max Series, S-6 Series, S-7 Series, Q-Series, and the S-7 Max V-Series. The E-Series is Roborock's entry-level segment and the only one without the LiDAR sensor. Instead, it uses twin gyroscopes and an optical sensor for location tracking, so it still navigates in straight lines and has a recharge and resume feature. However, it lacks features in more expensive robots, namely the live map and other add-ons to go along with it, like containment, map saving, and multi-pass runs. OnePlus not having LiDAR is the longer runtime, maxing out at 200 minutes, or 20 more than other LiDAR-based Roborock options. There are two E-Series options, the E4 and E5, which select submodels having the mapping feature. Next in the totem pole is the S-Max series, namely the S5 Max and S4 Max, with the former being Roborock's flagship during its release. These submodels have varying feature sets, the S5 Max being the first with the electronic water tank and one of Roborock's best-selling hybrid robot and mop combos, while the S4 Max is the cheaper option without the mopping feature but with more airflow. Out of the S5 Max is the S6 series with three options, the S6, S6 Pure, and S6 Max V. The S6 Max V was the first Roborock with obstacle avoidance and utilized the same water tank as the S5 Max. That's why it's the most expensive option in the S6 series. The S6 and S6 Pure are very similar in their features but with varying water tank capacities. While the S5 Max's electronic water tank was above average at mopping stains, it lacked efficiency since it didn't have any agitation and only dragged a wet pad on the surface. It was miles ahead of a gravity tank with water disbursement efficiency, but it could be better. That's why Roborock released the S7. This model was Roborock's first with a vibrating mopping pad with the lift feature called Vibrarize. Soon after its release came the twin barrel self emptying base station, another Roborock first which was designated the S7 Plus. The twin barrel design was interesting because it had a filter and a bag, which was redundant. After all, bag self-emptying base stations usually don't have a filter because the bag doubles as the filter. Roborock further improved upon the S7 with the S7 Max V series. The Max V designation means it has a vision system or obstacle avoidance, addressing the issues that plagued the S6 Max V namely its struggles with avoiding pet feces and wires. The reactive AI 2.0 system adds an LED and two laser sensors flanking the twin lens camera to enhance obstacle detection so it's better equipped to avoid obstacles like pet feces and coiled wires, but it still struggles with stretched out wires. Another variation of the S7 Max V is the Plus, which uses the older twin barrel base station, but with the same robot as the S7 Max V Ultra. It's a good alternative if you don't want the bulky do-it-all base station or the premium cost. Additionally, there's a non-plus option for folks who don't want or need the self-emptying feature. Lastly is the Q-Series, which is in the premium option, but these straddle between the mid-price and lower-end premium levels, previously missing from the Roborock lineup. There are two primary models in the Q-Series, the Q5 and Q7, with some variations in the latter. The Q5 is the least expensive since it doesn't have the mapping feature and utilizes the older combo brush design. I tested the Q5 and Q7 variants and there wasn't much variance in cleaning performance, so it shouldn't be a deciding factor. The Q7 has two types of water tanks, depending on the model. 
the Q7 uses a gravity tank, while the Q7 Max has an electronic water tank. One plus for the Q7 is the larger water tank despite only having the gravity tank. So if dustbin capacity is a deciding factor, I'd go with this model over the Q7 Max. As with the S7 and S7 Max V series, the Q series has options with and without a clean base station. These are the only model groups in Roblox product range with the self-emptying feature. Older options like the S Max, S6, and E series don't have this option. All rubber options except the A-Series use LiDAR or laser distance sensor, making these robots some of the more efficient ones available. Regardless of the model, these robots will start the run cleaning the edges before moving towards the middle portions in an efficient back and forth pattern. It's the only robot vacuum brand I've tested with a three-pass run option, available in the spot or selective room cleaning modes, but it only does a one-pass run in a default setting. LiDAR also unlocks other benefits such as map saving, containment, and much more. Roborock also released new app upgrades with the Q and S7 Max V series, including the 3D or matrix map and mapping run, and is now grandfathered into older variants like the S5 Max. The 3D map, as its name implies, shows the map in a 3D perspective that users can view in different angles. While the mapping run shortcuts the map creation process by taking full advantage of LiDAR's 360-degree scanning ability to create maps in a fraction of the time it takes a full run. There isn't much variance with service debris cleaning as all Roborock options I've reviewed picked up in the high 90s. But it's not the same with deep cleaning as the older models, namely the S5 Max and S4 Max, were the best at picking up embedded sand. Roblox Premium Options, the S7 Plus and S7 Max V Ultra, got the next best scores at 78.85% and 77.95% respectively. These results prove that the all rubber brush isn't better at debris pickup. However, it's better at cleaning hair and resisting tangles than models with the older combo brush. Another benefit of the bristleless roller is it's easier dislodging hair from it. As I've said in the intro, Roborock was one of the early utilizers of the smartphone app for controlling the robot. It has features like a live map, containment, and map saving, giving consumers lots of control over the robot. Options with the electronic water tank have additional settings to control water flow. Models with a self-emptying base station enable folks to control auto-empty frequency. New features have been added in the latest Q-Series and S7 Max V releases, like the 3D slash matrix map map details, and mapping run. The good news for consumers is these features are rolled out to older models, benefiting consumers who bought these options. As with any robot vacuum, this will depend on three things. Features you'll need, preference, and budget. For people who want a robot that does it all, without regard for the price, the S7 Max V Ultra is the most obvious answer. The do-it-all base station self-empties and washes the pad, so minimal babysitting is involved. It has the latest Reactive AI 2.0, improving its obstacle avoidance capabilities. The S7 Max V Plus is a gold cheaper alternative if the Ultra base station is too bulky or the price too high. It uses the same robot as the Ultra model, but with the older twin barrel base station. For me, the best value option is the Q5 Plus at its price point, a mid-price option without the premium features but with a self-emptying base station. Since there's little variance in cleaning performance and navigation between Roborock models, consumers will need to look at other features as deciding factors. And at its current price bracket, I feel this model offers better value than any of the S6 series or S-Max series because of the auto-empty feature, and it's one of their best-selling options online. Consider the Q7 Max Plus if you need the mopping feature without spending a premium for the S7 Max V Plus or Ultra. Let me know what your favorite Roborock model is in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful to you, consider giving it a thumbs up. It goes a long way in growing this channel and reaching more consumers. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new videos like this. Links are in the description below for the individual product reviews and comparison. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.